If you love home automation and use Home Assistant like I do, then you should definitely check out the Stream Deck plugin for Home Assistant. And that's what we're going to look at in the video today. So the first thing you're going to need to do is create a long lived token in Home Assistant. So let's go into Home Assistant and I'll show you how that's done. So here is the home screen of Home Assistant. You want to go to your profile by clicking down here. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you can see the long lived access tokens section. So let's click create token, give it a name. Click OK. And then it gives you the token here so you can either generate a QR code for it or just double click here, copy, and then in a minute we'll paste it into the plugin. Now let's walk through the setup process, how you get the plugin installed and how you configure the buttons on the Stream Deck. So to install the Home Assistant plugin on the Stream Deck, you need to open up the Stream Deck software and then go to the plus icon, which is here. Click this and it will load up this screen. Go to plugins, search for Home Assistant, and then you can see there's this plugin here. And then you click install and it's installed. Once it's installed, you'll be able to see it here and it has an option of Entity and then a slightly advanced version of Entity, but they're pretty much the same really. Now that we've got the plugin installed, let's go and drag an entity onto the Stream Deck. On my screen, you can see that there's four of these. That's because I've got an old plugin installed and I've also got the new one. So you will probably just see these two here. Let's drag this across. And now you will see that for the first time, you need to add the Home Assistant URL and the access token that we just got out of Home Assistant. This is a one off exercise and once you've done it once, you won't need to do it again. It shows you here the format that you need to put in. And then just paste the token, save and connect. Once you've input the server settings, you'll then be able to scroll down and you'll be able to select the domain. So I'll select light, select an entity, and then select the service. So that's if you want to turn it on, off or toggle it. And then here you can also define a different action for a long press on the Stream Deck. So if you press the Stream Deck button for more than 300 milliseconds, then it will do something different. Here allows you to have a custom title based on an attribute out of Home Assistant. So uh, here it's got friendly name. If you don't want to use that, then you can untick that and you can put in here the name that you want. Once you've done that, we can then go and save that configuration and you can see it now shows us a toggle button with the title underneath. The good thing about this as well is, is that it shows you the state of that entity. So when you toggle it on and off, it'll actually show you that that device, in this case a lamp, is on or off. I'm now going to press the lamp button on the Stream Deck and show you that it changes the icon. So if we click on the entity here, you can change the icon by going to this arrow here and then either setting the icon from the file or going into the built-in Stream Deck library and choosing an icon from there. However, if you do it like this, then you can't set an icon per entity state. So if it's on or off, it will show the same icon. That's what this other entity is for. So if we drag this and put it on here, you can see that it shows the state of off or on and then you can set an icon against each of those states. So you do the same thing, select here either from file or from the icon library 
and then it will show you a different icon depending on whether that entity is on or off. Now let's create a Stream Deck button that shows sensor information from Home Assistant. So let's grab the entity. This time we're going to select the sensor domain and then select our entity. If you've got a lot of entities, it can be a bit tricky to find them. Um, they seem to be somewhat in alphabetical order, but then some of them aren't. So you just have to search. In this instance, I'm going to show the solar that's being generated from the house. Now, if I just save this like this, you'll see that it brings in the icon from Home Assistant, which is pretty cool. And then it shows the state. However, it doesn't show the units of measurement or anything like that. So if you want to do that, then what you can do is, is you can select enable custom labels. And then in here, you can type in the information. So if we do this, it will show state. So let's save that. And you can see it shows the state, but you can also see it overlaps with the icon. So what you need to do is move it down a couple so that it doesn't like that. And then if you want to add the units of measurement as well, And you can do it like that. Save. And there we go. And then we can finish it off with a title. And now that shows me the solar that's been generated. And it should update automatically whenever that changes. There we go. You just saw it change. And there we go. That's how you toggle a device on or off in, from Home Assistant. And that's how you show some tensor information from Home Assistant. I've been using the plugin for nine to 12 months now, and I've not had any issues with it. It's been really reliable. I've been really happy with it. Normally when APIs are involved, you can get intermittent comms issues. You have to restart apps, etc. But I've not had to do this. Every time I've pressed a button to activate a device, it's worked as expected. One of the things I really like about the Stream Deck is that when you press a button, you can set it to do multiple actions at once. So you could combine different plugin behaviors onto one button. So for example, you could get Home Assistant to turn on a few lights at the same time as turning your microphone on and off or setting a certain camera setting if you've got an Elgato camera, etc. I feel like this plugin has got a lot of potential. Besides turning lights on and off and setting sensor values, you could explore some of the other entities, things like the media player or incrementing some input numbers or input selects. There's probably a lot you could do, so I'll be really interested to see what ideas you guys come up with. Well, that's it for this time. If you like the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. So thanks until next time. <laughs>